What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Chromecast. Today we have a special in-person interview episode with Victor Tien, who leads the Compute Go-To-Market initiatives in the Americas and Europe for MediaTek. I was recently out in Sonoma, California for the MediaTek Executive Summit, and Victor was kind enough to sit down with me to chat about their announcement of their next-gen Campagno chips for entry-level Chromebooks, the Campagno 520 and Campagno 528. We dug into all the details of the new processors, but Victor also shared some thoughts on the entire Campagno lineup of good, better, and best processors, the company's focus on sustainability, the education market, and how MediaTek came up with the name Campagno. It was so much fun to do an in-person interview, and I hope that you all enjoy it. So without any further ado, here is my conversation with Victor from MediaTek. Victor, thanks so much for, for taking some time to chat. I know this is a, a busy event for you all, and you all are running around all over the place, but doing these interviews today uh, is awesome, and thank you for taking some time to do this. Thank you, Joe. It's always great to be with you talking about uh, Chromebooks, uh, both I think both of us have a strong passion for that, and uh, it's great to, <laughs> yeah. to be uh, chatting with you about it. Yeah, the uh, you know all of the other presentations are going on yesterday, and people are you know engaged, and I'm I'm always listening and watching those. I think it's fascinating the new the new uh, Dimensity uh, 9200, uh, great chip, incredible. Uh, but then it comes time to the, for the Chromebook presentation, and I'm running around getting pictures, taking taking video because. This is this is our passion, and yeah, it, yeah it's great to it's great to sit down and chat with you and get some of the the inside details yeah, on uh, on the new announcement. And speaking of, congratulations on another uh, uh, Chromebook chip announcement, the Campagno uh, uh, 520 and 528. Yeah. So tell folks a little bit about what these chips are and, and where they fall kind of in the in the in the lineup. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 been a great journey for MediaTek, you know, with Chromebooks. Uh, you know, we started off in the 2016 timeframe, very much in that kind of entry segment, education focused. And you know, if you look at where we are now in 2022, we've moved mid tier, we've moved to the premium, right. we've got devices hitting all price points, providing all sorts of value to consumers. Uh, you know, you've got the Asus Spin 513, the yeah. HP X360, using kind of the top of the line. Uh, uh, processors that we bring to the table, yeah. and then you know on the on the sort of the entry segment, uh, we we've had the Companio 500, which did really well, yeah. especially through the pandemic. Yes, you know, enabling all sorts of exciting devices like the Duet and the HP 11A. Um, so we've had awesome success there, but it's time now to kind of bring that segment up a, up a tier, yeah. um, and and you know get a refresh of the mm -hmm. uh, Companion 500 series. And that's where the Companion 520 and the 528 come mm -hmm. into play. Yeah, so so just so we can get the specs kind of out of the way, yeah. what is the difference in the two chips and, and what's the architecture that they're kind of built on? Yeah, so the, uh, the 528 is basically clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, mm -hmm. so slightly higher frequency, so about 10% higher performance versus the Companion 520. The architecture is a Two plus six, so mm -hmm. two big cores, two Cortex A76 coupled mm -hmm. with six uh, uh, Cortex A55s. Mm -hmm. So it still gives you that octa-core architecture, but with a two plus six configuration. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done enhancements across the board. So the GPU has been enhanced. Mm -hmm. uh, we've improved the uh, the codex. The ISP has higher you know megapixel support for the cameras. Yeah, right. There's an AI processing unit on board. The security has been enhanced, so we've been working with Google. We've got the kind of next generation security yeah. all embedded into this right. product. You know, uh, verified boot, uh, malware protection, multi-user support, all those are enhancements yeah. that come about on the security side, which is very important, you know, to create a, a safe environment for, for students especially. Right. Um, so yeah, just all around uh, improvements on this, on this uh, SOC. And basically, the uplift that you expect is roughly 2x over the Companion 500. So significant bump up, really opening up uh, you know, the, the use cases yeah. uh, significantly. I think you and I were playing around with uh, the, the uh, prototype device yes. yesterday. Yeah, it, in the very demo impressive. Room. Yeah, and you know you could see how you know we were we were running uh, cloud gaming, you know AAA Fortnite game with a Discord Android app, you know with social yeah. messaging going on and an external display 
external display. <laughs> We're sharing our screen. And yeah. All of this yep. is happening, you know, on an entry level platform in a very performant way. Yeah. Um, and you know, we've done all these enhancements, but you still get that amazing all day battery life. So we have not compromised there at all. It's still right. operating in a very uh, small power envelope. So the, the the battery life enhancements are are all there for users. Uh, Sixteen plus hours of battery life right. is what you can expect. Um, and, and I think we were, we were chatting uh, earlier too about the sustainability benefits. Right. So you know this is something that we're also doing a lot more research into, working with uh, with experts in the field like PX3, trying to figure out you know how does this all translate to carbon emissions? Right. Because ultimately, if you're using less battery. Uh, if you're using less power from the from the outlets, there must be uh, uh, some component of that trans that translates into uh, energy savings. Right. Yeah. And we see a considerable amount of CO2 emissions that uh, you know you're saving by using these types of devices that consume much less power, like 40 to 60 percent, depending on the tier that you're at. So it's it's significant. And for you know, schools that are deploying tens of thousands of devices, right. th there's a big multiplier effect there that you can imagine. So, um, yeah, all of these are, are, are benefits that we're uh, bringing with these new processors. And, and these are uh, not just education chips, correct? There will be some consumer, uh, hopefully manufacturers, putting out devices that are consumer uh, in addition to, um, I'm, I'm Sure, obviously, you're going to have these in education devices. Absolutely, um, yeah. yeah. Education is probably the sweet, sweet spot where they're going to basically resonate sure. a lot because, uh, you know, there's a big market for education with, the, with these very kind of affordable types of devices. But you can imagine that OEMs can use larger screens, larger memory footprints. And now, again, because we've elevated that performance for these devices, that allows you to do a lot more with these types of devices, larger screens, more memory. Right. Uh, basically opening up you know a lot of new features and no, a lot of new applications right in right. that consumer segment yeah in 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 you know definitely edu is is a focus you know is how, how is media tech kind of thinking about the education market obviously when pandemic happened there were so many um, people that picked up Chromebooks and had Chromebooks at home as kids are back in schools now there's so many more schools that are going one-to-one -one. Um, is is EDU still uh, uh, when you're thinking about kind of market and and what you all are doing with Chromebook chips? Is EDU uh, a focus for you all? How are you all thinking about education? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, our our main focus is education, consumer, and we're even now looking at some of the enterprise opportunities. Right. But in education, um, and this is a little close to my heart because I'm driving my team is driving a lot of that effort. Yeah. Is the go to market right. for the education, which is. If you think about it, it's a lot of work with the resellers, you know, making sure that we have all the partnerships set up with the big folks that sell to the school districts. So a lot of work going on there. We're participating in a lot more trade shows. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, our first education trade show was earlier this year at ISTE in New Orleans, but next year we'll be at BET, we'll be at FETC, and we've got a number of other shows that will we'll have you know, significant booth presence and, and showcasing. And then we're doing a lot of advertising to the school district so that they know about us, they know our value proposition. So we're working with uh, agencies like Education Week and others, uh, and you'll see you know, MediaTek um, you know, front and center there with ads and value prop and benchmarks that we're uh, communicating to the education uh, community. And yeah. really showing you know, what is that value that, that you get. And, right. and if, you, if you ask that question, because you know, we could talk about specs and yep. features all day, but how is it really helping the, 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 the students, the teachers at the end of the day? You know, a lot of it comes down to teachers are in many ways revolting against technology. Because it's, when technology doesn't work well for them, yeah. it actually hit, uh, it, it, it basically makes their life a lot harder. Yeah. So it takes them away from doing what they need to do, educating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. So you know, there's a big benefit there uh, to the teachers. They get to focus, as you said, on what they do best, which is teaching. Um, there's also the benefit to the students, which is you know, they get to work with these devices in a stress-free kind of manner. They're not mm -hmm. worrying about when that Chromebook's going to shut down because the battery is being depleted. The multitasking feature is also very important. You know, when they're doing a video conference and they're trying to do some other functions, that's where we see a lot of benefit with the, with the, with the MediaTek Companio offerings. You know, the octa-core really starts to shine there. Right. You know, so these are all areas that 
you know, benefits that we bring to students, to teachers, and they spill over into the consumer space too, right? Yeah. If you're someone who wants to work on your device and you go to a coffee shop, we all know that many coffee shops out there don't have chargers on every right. table, right? And you're sitting and you know, trying to f figure out where you're gonna do your work. You don't wanna be stressed with that either. And you don't even wanna be carrying that charger in the first place, right? right? So these devices, I mean, you know, when you're talking 15, 16 plus hours of battery life, uh, with that type of performance, it's, it's, it's a game changer. I yeah. mean, we don't have that today in many cases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so these are the benefits that, that we see. And we're, like I said, we're, we're kind of looking at the enterprise space too, and, mm -hmm. and there are some use cases there that are resonating really well too. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think some of them were mentioned yesterday where you know, one, one use case was is a, is a, in a you know, multi-billion dollar hospital mm -hmm. uh, in the US where they need a device that sits on a cart that is basically hauled around you know, between different patient rooms throughout the day. And they can't be worrying about charging that device. And there is no power on the, you know, obviously the cart is a mobile uh, uh, station. <laughs> station yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So they need 16 plus hours of battery life. Yeah. And we're delivering that through one of our key OEM partners. So yeah. Uh, yeah, just lots of opportunities out there, I think. Yeah, in enterprise, you know, people think enterprise and they think of big companies and, you know, yeah. staff walking around with laptops. But enterprise is, is a lot more than that. We've had some great conversations with folks at Google about kiosks and in yeah. ways that Chrome OS can really be leveraged um, in even some of these, you know, little touchscreen kiosks that people use when they go in to order their, you know, food at a restaurant or whatever. And so there's a lot of interesting applications Absolutely. there and, and these chips can obviously plug in there. We can't wait to test these. Uh, we want to get them in. We want to put them to the put them to the test and see uh, kind of what they're made of. We've, we've loved uh, what we've seen so far with the 1200 and 1380. Yep. Um, we had that conversation with, uh, with Adam when the uh, uh, HP 13B came out with the 1200 in it. So talk a little bit about the, the, the lineup now. So Adam yesterday kept mentioning the good, better, and best. Now. Yep. Um, so talk about that a little bit and, and where this chip fits into the lineup. Sure, sure, yeah. So basically think of it as the next generation for the Companion 500. So, you know, if you think about the Companion 500, it was released in uh, early 2020, 2020 yeah. just before the pandemic. And that's uh, MT8183. That's the MT8183, yeah. for those that know the Because yeah. we called it we called it that for a really long time, so some, yeah. of, our, some yeah. of our old yes. listeners might yes. not know 500. Yes. Uh, but we do. We love the Companion naming, so we, we've been sticking to that. But for those that... That device, when it was announced, I mean, even like Amazon listings were saying 8183 right. and stuff. So, right. so that's, that's that device. That's just that for, device. Mm -hmm. And this is the next gen, you mm -hmm. know, basically coming about for lining up with the 2023 education cycle. So you'll see devices, you know, using this processor uh, in the first quarter of next year. Uh, very much, again, aligned with uh, how school districts, um, you know, evaluate and right. purchase devices. Um, like I said, there'll be consumer uh, flavors of those devices also in the market. And then, you know, if you move the tier up to the uh, kind of the mid-range, it's the Companion 800 series, the, the 820 and the 828, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, offer about double the performance versus the 500 series. And then you move up one more tier, you're up in the Companion 1000 series, that's your best, that's kind of the premium tier. And that's about a 50% jump from the Companion 800 series. So, an, you know, a significant uh, yeah. uh, performance uplift there. And there we have the 1200 and the 1380, which um, I think you've, you've played around with those devices. Yeah. And they are super performant for Chrome OS with, you know, it's, it's you know, the light OS, not needing a lot of resources. And personally, I, I, I can't push those devices hard enough. They yeah. do everything I need in a, in a super snappy way. Right? Yeah. So, that's kind of the, the top tier that we have now. Yeah, the, um, the 1380 in the Acer 513 is, uh, is, a, is a lot of processor and it's a, it's a great device. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Campania. What, where did that come from and what does that, what does that naming structure mean to you all? Well, we, we love it because you know, I like this naming structure. I think it makes it easier for people to understand the type of device they're, they're going and purchasing. Um, but where did this come from for you all, and, and what does Campagno mean to MediaTek? Yeah. No, that's a good question, and, and you know, we're having a lot of discussion with different folks around that because we want them to understand really what the brand story is, and then what is that value prop that these devices mm -hmm. bring. So Campagno, actually, the, word, the, the brand comes from the word companion. 
So it's, it's trying to capture the essence of always with you computing. And these are devices that you basically love to the point where you want to carry them everywhere you go and you want them to be around there, you know, with you. So, but the idea is that that will only happen if these devices bring something to you, that, that you know, they offer something to the user, right? And we see it kind of playing around a, a couple of different dimensions. One is that all day battery life, right? That's basically the device is always there for you. Yeah. So I'm not going to open up the device at 7 p.m. and find that it's dead and, and can't really help me. It's there. It's got 30, 40 percent left at the end of the day. So it's reliable, right? There's a sustainability component, which I was talking to you about, and that's very important. Like, you know, people now are making purchasing decisions of all sorts, not just electronics, with the environment in mind, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting all your work done on a device that uses a much smaller power envelope versus another device, that's a big benefit. And that's, you know, going to those carbon emission savings. So that's, that's a big component that we're seeing. The other one is the multitasking, you know, that eight core, that architecture that allows you to do just more parallel processing. When you push yeah. the device, when you're in a meet conference call and you're doing screen sharing and you've got your virtual background and then you want to kick off some other function. And that happens to us, you know, uh, this is the new normal yeah. that we're in, right? Uh, a lot more video conferencing going on as compared to pre-pandemic. Those devices excel at that, and yeah. we have specific benchmarks that show that, right? The fact that they use less battery life means that you can design these devices with smaller batteries mm -hmm. if that's what you want to if that's what you want to optimize. Yeah, thin and light. Thin devices. and light, yeah. right? So that means you can carry them for students. Very important for you know hauling back and forth from school. For consumers, same thing, you know, you toss it into your bag and you don't feel it throughout the day. And then lastly, it's that fanless, silent and cool, right? They're not uh, creating stress for you. No noise, you know, there are, there are research that shows that, yeah. that noise creates stress, right? And, 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 and Adam talked yesterday about, yeah. you know, in, in offices, you're in an office, you're in a cubicle, there's noise running, there's refrigerators. You may not notice that device in front of you having fans kicking on all the time, but with folks working from home and, and that becoming more, uh, more and more normal, if we were sitting here right now and had a device right over there running and the fans kicked on, we would hear it, yeah, you know? And so, absolutely. so then you start this like kind of noise pollution idea that, that now we can have these devices that are, that are fanless and you exactly. don't have to, do, you don't have to yeah. deal with that. And the other benefit is they run cool. So, mm, you right. know, you put them on your lap if you're at an airport and, you know, you don't have a table to work on, you know, they don't burn up your lap. I mean, yeah. and that's another important thing, right? Some of these devices that we work with today just generate a lot of heat to the point where it becomes uncomfortable. Yeah. So you don't have that. Now, put all this together and most, I think most people would think that these are devices that you start to love, right? And you want them to be your companions. And that all relates back to the, to the brand, the yeah. companion brand, right? So that's the connection there. And we're doing a lot on the go-to-market side to, 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 to bring that out. So one of the exciting things is the palm rest stickers. Yeah. So, you know, some of the new devices that you've been uh, evaluating, you're starting to see those palm rest yeah. stickers. We're working with our OEM partners to get that across the board. Um, you know, that will help a lot to get the, the brand sort of built up with consumers. We're doing a lot of work with the big retailers. Uh, you know, if you go in Best Buy, especially right now, you will see actual MediaTek Companio uh, ads that are running with some of our key OEM partners. So very excited about that. And then many other channels that we're also working both on retail and education, where we're trying to you know, make, get that message out. And this is the value prop that we bring, and we think it's, it's quite unique in the market. Well, obviously you all are investing in, in Chrome, Chromebook and investing in this platform. Some people might look at um, some headlines and we've, we've tried to debunk this. We've tried to tell people that, you know, the, the dip in sales isn't, doesn't mean that Chromebooks yeah. are going away. Um, you all are obviously investing heavily in, in Chrome OS and Chromebooks. What, what, what sort of trend do you all see there? And, and Adam had a, had a great slide yesterday that I'll definitely throw into the video here. Yeah. But, but maybe talk a little bit about where you see kind of the market and, and how you all are reacting to the, you know, the, the dip that, that everyone saw with, with Chromebooks after the pandemic spike. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question and a very valid question, right? Because you know, if you look at the progression, you know, in the pandemic, there was this huge demand Government funding, obviously, like the ECF, drove a lot of that type, that demand. Um, schools are, you know, 
getting devices out to students one on one. We're almost at 100% in the US now and some other Western markets too uh, have that kind of saturation level. So we got to the point where yes, Chromebooks got elevated, a lot of folks got exposed to them, which is a great thing because now it's an opportunity for them to see the value that these devices bring to the market. Um, but then we got to the point where, okay, there's that saturation and then of course macroeconomic issues start to kick in, inflation and so forth, and we see the demand uh, coming down now yeah. for, for some time. I think uh, second half of 21 when, is when we started to yep. notice that, right? Yep. And it's still ongoing. And we think it's going to persist for a while until the market sort of corrects right. itself. But we're not going to be caught up in the short sight view. We are, we're exactly. still quite very optimistic on the long term view. And if you look at the long term view, it really covers the three segments, you know, mm -hmm. education. So in education, there's the refresh, obviously, all these devices, many of these devices that got sold in the pandemic at some point have to be refreshed. Uh, we're coming up to the refresh uh, cycles in 23 and 24, so that will create uh, uh, definitely an opportunity there. Yeah. Teacher devices is another area yeah. that we're really looking at very carefully because it makes sense for the teacher and the student to be using a common platform. There's a lot of synergy there, right, when they're basically on the same platform and, and compatibility right. and interoperability are all there. And then there's Lower cost of ownership, I think. We're, we're starting to see some school districts where they, they say, do we need a $1,000 device for a right. teacher? Right. Not really, right? right? You can be at a much more competitive price point, getting all your work done, and at the same time, in the same environment as a, as a student in a Chrome OS setting, right? So there are teacher opportunities. Yep. There are markets that are very much ready for adoption besides, you know, outside of the U.S. Sure. Indonesia, India, Brazil, we talked about some of those opportunities. So in education, we see it, you know, there is a good opportunity there. Consumer is another area that I think is also uh, an area that can, you know, with detachables, with devices that have more features built into them, uh, kind of that 300 to 600 dollar range. Uh, we see opportunity there and mm -hmm. we've got the Companion 800 and 1000 series uh, processors lined up to take advantage of those opportunities. And then enterprise, you know, we've talked about that too, kiosks and digital signage and contact centers and healthcare. You know, these are opportunities again where Chrome OS can do really well. So yeah. longer term, definitely we see uh, opportunity there and we want to be positioned to, to bring, you know, uh, value to these different segments. Yeah. We, we love the work that you all are doing. We love um, seeing ARM just continue to, to grow um, and uh, you all continuing to invest in Chromebooks. And this announcement is great. Now we have kind of this nice lineup of good, better, and best with the Campagno series. Um, and, and we just and we just love it. So, Victor, I know I know you're a you're a busy guy today. <laughs> I'm sure you've got to run off to the next thing. But thank you so much for taking some time. Uh, this has been this has been great, and I, I definitely think it's uh, some some good useful information for our audience. So I thank you uh, for taking the time. Thank you, Joe. Always great to to talk with you. Yeah, and yeah. we got to do it in person. Yes. Look at yes. this. Look at this. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much, Victor, and we'll we'll catch up again next time. Absolutely. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Chromecast. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up, go down there and click subscribe, and make sure to ring the notification bell so you get an alert when we put out future episodes. That's it for this one. We'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.